All right, let's head back to Gail in Van Horn, Texas, for more coverage of Blue Origin's launch. Sun is up there, Gail. Sky's looking good. I know the sky's looking good. I mean, the weather seems pretty perfect to me. Jeff Bezos and his fellow passengers are now on New Shepard. We saw them get on about 10 minutes ago. They were walking up a ramp, and before they walked in, they each rang a little bell. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means. We were looking at the feed from the training center, and we saw Mark Bezos helping his brother Jeff do something with his, his flight suit. It's very cute. It's a very intimate moment when you see the four of them together just sitting there waiting. Former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson knows just what those moments feel like. She has spent more cumulative time in space than any other American and the most of any woman in the world, 685 days in total. During her time at NASA, she was commander of the International Space Station twice. You go, Ms. Whitson. Now she plans to come out of retirement and travel to space again as commander for the private company Axiom Space. Peggy Whitson joins us now. Good morning to you, Peggy Whitson. You know, a, a few minutes ago, they put a pause on the countdown clock. It, it only lasted for four minutes. They don't have to tell us a reason. But when you hear that there's a pause, what does that say to you? And what, what does that do to you mentally when there is a pause? It's back, it's counting again, so everything seems to be fine. But there was a four minute pause. Well, for shuttle launches, we always had built-in holds. I don't know that they do that for, uh, for Blue, but in any case, they are not going to a destination, so it'll be okay. They're, they're going just to space, and uh, as long as they are satisfied that whatever issue is resolved, they'll be fine. But everything on launch day is a hurry up and wait kind of thing. You have to hurry up to be on time. <laughs> Then you have to wait, and so it's it's a little disconcerting yeah. being in that mode. Yeah, you know, wonder Peggy. I got up at three o'clock this morning, and one of the first things I started thinking about was the Bezos brothers and the other two crew members. What this must feel like to them, this waiting. I don't. I was thinking, do you sleep the night before? What do you eat the night before? Are you nervous as you're sitting there just waiting to go? Tell us what that was like for you and what you think they must be feeling at this moment. Well, on my very first launch, I was very worried about uh, doing everything right. Um, theirs is a lot more relaxed in the sense that they don't have to do a lot of complex maneuvers, but they have only a very short period of time while they're in space. And so they're going to want to take advantage of every second while they're up there. So they're probably thinking about, I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to do this, and you know, figure out their sequence and, uh, of events. You know, a lot has been, a lot of, there's, we were talking about the training, what goes into this, as you said, they don't have to do a lot of complex maneuvers. Basically, all they have to do is get in there and ride. And when you talk about the training, uh, in the book it says, anybody in reasonable health could do this. Some of the requirements are this, height and weight range, 5'10", 110, 110 pounds, 6'4", up to 223 pounds. Be able to dress yourself in a one-piece zip-up flight suit. Uh, be able to strap and unstrap in 15 seconds and remain strapped into a crew capsule for 40 minutes and up to 90 minutes and not have to use the bathroom or get up. So the training is very, very different from when you were training. Can you just give us a glimpse of to what your training was like back in the day compared to, and these are, as we know, very two different types of flights. It is extremely different because we trained two years, just basic training, learning all the systems of the space shuttle and the uh, International Space Station. And then later I learned Soyuz systems as well. But for each flight, then there was a couple of more years of training. So it's, it's a much more complex uh, and covers a much bigger yeah. period of time. Yeah. Can you also talk about a lot has been made of Richard Branson just went up, Elon Musk SpaceX vehicle went up, and now we've got Blue Origin. You know, I've heard it described as joyride for billionaires. Maybe it's a vanity project. When you talk to all three of these men, they also they emphasize nothing could be further from the truth. They feel very committed to this cause, very passionate about it. How do you see what they're doing? Well, I think it's really important what, we, what we're seeing now. These are the first steps of commercial spaceflight and uh, commercialization of space in particular, which I think, you know, is, it has to be built uh, in these peace parts. And so 
Yes, it takes money to make some of these things happen. And uh, it's a very, very exciting time because not only do we have Blue and uh, Virgin doing suborbital flights, we're going to have later this year uh, Inspiration 4 on SpaceX. And then next year we'll have uh, a couple of Axiom flights to the International Space Station. So mm -hmm. it's all building blocks uh, that allow commercialization of space and the utilization of space for commercial purposes. And I think you're going to see some really exciting developments in the next few years just based on the commercialization. Yeah. I feel it here. And I got to say, Peggy, I got a big old girl crush on Wally Funk. I know that you've met her. You know her. People say she's a real deal. In one sentence, how would you describe her? Uh, infectious enthusiasm and extremely yes. uh, effervescent. <laughs> she is. She's everything. Yes. You know, you want well to, done. your ambassador to space to be. <laughs> Yes, absolutely right. Liz, you know, she's 82, and she told us yesterday she feels 24. I want some of what she's drinking. Thank you, Peggy Whitson. It's always good to see you. Thank you very much.